In this video we're going to go over some of the basics and also what to look for when purchasing a boost or a buck converter. So let's start off with the basics. What is a boost or buck converter? Or is this sometimes referred to as a step up or step down converter? Well essentially what a boost or buck converter does is depending on the type of unit you buy it will either increase or decrease voltage that is fed into the unit. Some of the boost or buck converters you'll find on the internet will also have extra features such as current control. Now this can be useful uh, when driving LEDs per se because we not only want to control the voltage but sometimes we want to control how much current is fed to the LED. So it's important to figure out what application your boost or buck converter will be used for to buy the appropriate unit. So here's a small sample of some of the boost and buck converters that I happen to have on hand at the moment uh, and fundamentally they all do the same job uh, however, some have features which would be handy in some applications. For example, this one has a voltmeter on it which can measure the input and output voltage. You can also get uh, boost buck converters that can also measure how much current's been passed through the unit which can be very handy. Uh, this buck converter uh, is designed to charge lithium batteries, though there's no reason it can't be used just purely as a buck converter. Um, so it has a trim pot for adjusting voltage and current and it has a bicolour LED on it to indicate when the battery's been charged and when it's fully charged, for instance. So we're going to get some of these out of the way, because as we mentioned, we're going to look at three different types of converters, which are these three units here. We have a buck converter, a boost converter, and a boost buck converter. And first, we're going to have a look at the boost converter. So this is the first converter we're going to be looking at today. And on one end we have a blue trim pot with a screw on the top. This is used for adjusting the output voltage. And on the other end we have our screw down terminal headers with an LED down there to indicate when the unit is running. And on the underside, if you have a look, we have our uh, terminal headers and they are marked input and output, positive and negative respectively. Now when purchasing a boost or buck converter, uh, quite often you'll be purchasing these uh, online and they'll be shipped from overseas and quite often uh, sellers and retailers would like to stretch the truth of how much current one of these units can be fed so that they're hoping that provided the rest of the competition actually lists the rated current this unit can handle if they put an extra amp or two on top of that hopefully you'll think their unit's special and buy it. Now. The problem with that is obviously we've been lied to, it's not uncommon sadly, uh, but what can we do to protect ourselves from this? Well, not a whole lot, apart from what we can do is once we've received the unit, we can have a look, and the camera's not going to pick it up because it's very faint, but we can have a look at the semiconductor ICs here, and if we Google the part numbers which will be printed on the face here where my pen's pointed, uh, we should find data sheets online for the uh, ICs here and then we'll be able to work out how much current this unit can actually handle. So here's an example of the data sheet you can find for those uh, semiconductor ICs. So this particular one is for one of the buck converters I've got and we can see here that uh, it features 8 to 40 volt input range adjustable from 1.25 to 36 uh, we get a dropout voltage at 0.3 and it can handle a maximum of 8 amps constant current. So what should you look for in a boost converter? Well obviously we need to take into consideration what voltage and current our load is going to be on the converter. So hypothetically let's bring in this LED and let's say that this LED needs 34 volts at 4 amps to run at full brightness and our power supply is going to be this 12 volt battery. So we've got 12 volts being fed into our boost converter. Now this boost converter, as I mentioned, is rated at 6 amps and you'd be forgiven for thinking that we're only going to be drawing 4 amps, that's how many amps our LED can handle. Everything should be good, right? Uh, in this setup, absolutely not. And here's why. Let's use a calculator. 
Now you could use an Ohm's Law calculator for this purpose, however we're only doing some basic calculations for how much power we're going to be consuming, so a regular calculator will do just fine. So let's calculate how many watts our LED or load on the boost converter is going to be. Now as I mentioned it's 34 volts and we're going to times that by the current, in this case 4 amps. We're going to hit equals and our load, our LED is going to draw 136 watts of power from our boost converter. Now for the sake of simplicity we're going to assume our boost converter is 100% efficient. Obviously in reality it's not, it's probably going to be between 90 and 95% if it's well designed. Um, however, let's just assume it's 100% efficient for argument's sake. So our LED is going to draw 136 watts of power. Now we need to divide this number by the voltage our power supply feeding the boost converter is. Now in this case it's a 12 volt battery. So we're going to divide 136 by 12 and hit equals and we get 11.3. So here is where the catch exists. We need our battery to supply 11.3 amps to our boost converter to be able to output 34 volts at 4 amps. Now the current rating which I mentioned earlier on this unit is 6 amps. That is not, definitely not, output current. That is input current. So we have almost doubled what this unit is rated for. We're almost pushing 12 amps through this to boost the current and voltage. Now, how do we get around this? Well, you could buy a bigger and beefier step-up or boost converter to handle this job. However, if we had a higher voltage uh, power supply so that this unit is not having to increase the voltage from such a low voltage to such a high voltage, then we're going to draw less current. So now let's change things up. Uh, as before, we're, our load is the LED, which is going to consume uh, 136 watts of power. And before we divided that figure by 12 volts, which was our, our 12 volt battery, but let's say our power source supplying the boost converter was now 26 volts. Hit equals, and we get 5.2 amps of current being consumed by our boost converter. So just by changing the power supply voltage to our boost converter to 26 volts now means that we're not going to exceed the 6 amp maximum input rating on our boost converter and that we can drive our LED at full brightness from exactly the same boost converter as before except the difference is from a 26 volt power supply this is going to live a happy life and from a 12 volt power supply it's going to absolutely die driving this LED. And here is the second converter we're going to be looking at today. This is a buck converter. Now this unit features two trim pots. One is used to adjust the output voltage and the other is used to adjust the output current. This can be particularly useful for things like LEDs or it can also be implemented as a safety measure so that if something goes wrong on an uh, electronic project you can restrict how much current can be fed to the circuit. Um, we have a bicolor LED mounted down there between the capacitors. This is used to indicate uh, if the unit is in voltage or current limiting mode. And as before we have our terminal headers for input and output voltage and as before they are marked underneath as well. So here's the setup, we've got a variable voltage power supply uh, and this is the display, it's going to show us the volts and current the buck converter is consuming over here. So the lab power supply is feeding the buck converter and then our load on the buck converter is a set of wire round resistors. This meter is going to measure the output voltage from our buck converter and this meter is going to measure the current from our buck converter. So let's turn on the lab power supply and we can see our dummy load, the wire round resistors, uh, are being fed with 12 volts and they're consuming about 0.7 amps. Now if you have a look on our lab power supply which is feeding power to our buck converter, you can see we're supplying 27 volts and our buck converter is consuming about 370 uh, milliamps. 
Now note what happens when I start decreasing the voltage. Watch what happens to the current draw from our buck converter. As the volts decrease, the current needed to supply the difference to our buck converter over here has to start going up. And if you'll notice, our voltage and current draw from the buck converter with our dummy load hasn't changed. So I'll push the voltage back up, and you can see the current draw goes back down. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well that's all fine and dandy, what does this demonstration prove? That's a good question. Well what we're proving here is what we explained earlier with the boost converters, uh, how the supply voltage makes a huge difference to how many amps and volts we can feed the load doesn't actually apply the same way to a buck converter and that's because even if I push the voltage down all the way to let's say 12 volts, 12.8 volts um, you can see our load is still around the 0.7 amps we're still feeding at 12 volts but the power needed to supply the buck converter is more or less what the buck converter is outputting now this is because we don't need any extra current uh, because we're not stepping up the voltage. So what I'm saying in a nutshell is that with a 10 amp buck converter we could have more or less a 10 amp load uh, irrespective of the voltage which makes choosing a buck converter a lot easier than choosing a boost converter. So by now we've taken a look at a buck converter and we've taken a look at a boost converter. And I'm sure a lot of you are aware, but I will clarify anyway, that although these are both converters, they don't do each other's jobs. Uh, a buck converter can only ever drop voltage uh, compared to its supplied voltage. So for instance, if we fed the buck converter here 20 volts, we can't get 21 volts out of it. We can only get, say, 20 volts to 1 volt. Now with a boost converter, it's the opposite. We can't get below the supplied voltage. We can only raise compared to the supplied voltage. Now one thing which we can look at though is a boost buck converter. Now this is arguably a more universal converter because it can do both jobs. So I'm going to demonstrate that now with my lab power supply and my multimeter is hooked up to the output of the boost buck converter. So at the moment my lab power supply is feeding the boost buck converter here 10, uh, sorry, 20 volts and it's outputting 10 volts so at the moment it's in buck mode but I'm going to raise the, keep raising the voltage until it changes to boost mode and now we're starting to boost past the supplied voltage so these are arguably a more universal uh, type of converter, it can be handy to have one lying around because it fills both jobs. Um, the same principles I explained about both boost and buck converters previously do apply to this depending whether it's in boost or buck mode. So that covers pretty much all the basic things you should know before purchasing a boost or a buck converter and perhaps the last thing uh, which is also rather obvious to a lot of people is don't exceed the voltage rating of your boost or buck converter or things will go pop, fizz, bang and a bit of smoke potentially fire can come out so that's a good one to avoid so I hope you found this video very informative if you have give it a like it would be much appreciated and if you like this video just check out some of my others because you'll probably find something good in there too thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next video bye for now